Okay, um, this chapter, chapter 5, is called Time. If you remember in the last chapter called Murray, we met the bat Murray, and we found out that he got bumped in the head when he, he fell on his head when he was young, and he didn't have good echolocation, which means he bumps into things. Uh, but he was very excited to have a friend, and I think Stumpy was happy to have him too. So this chapter is called Time. And here you can see a picture there of Gwendolyn, and she's looking out the window at the night sky. Kona, Gwendolyn whispered into the darkness, it's begun. The dog lifted his large brown head from his bed in the corner of the living room. Listen, said Gwendolyn. Kona held himself quite still and listened. There was a ticking of the Swiss clock on the mantel, the hush of the warm air on the gas fireplace, the subtle buzz of the plant light above Professor Albert's violets, and something else. Can you feel it in the air, Kona? Gwendolyn shifted her shell around to look at him directly. Kona waited, and as he did, a most powerful feeling came over him. Is it stumpy, he whispered. Is it time? The old crab stretched her antenna as high as they could reach. She searched the air. I believe it is time, she said with conviction. Oh, Kona jumped up. Oh, he went to the picture window and looked out toward the tops of the trees in Gooseberry Park. I wish I could be there, he said. He rested his front paws on the windowsill. Kona, dear, said Gwendolyn, you are a most remarkable dog, but I am sorry to say not so remarkable as to climb a tree and assist a squirrel with having babies. I wish I were, Kona said with a sigh. I wish I were that remarkable. She'll be fine, dear, Gwendolyn re said reassuringly, fully believing this herself. She's a plucky one. Kona star stared out the window toward the park a little longer, and then he began to pace. So there he is, looking out the window with Gwendolyn, wondering about Stumpy. He went from the living room to the dining room, turned right at the sideboard to the study, circled the study, then paced back to the living room exactly where he had come. He longed for a good bone to chew, but he had left his best one in the backyard. He plopped down on the floor and began chewing the leg of the coffee table. Kona, yelled Gwendolyn. What? The dog jumped so fast that he banged his nose on the table. Thanks, Gwendolyn. I forgot where I was. I don't think there's much damage. The old crab shook her head. Kona, my dear, there are some things in this life we must experience alone. Even having babies, asked Kona. Even having babies, answered Gwendolyn. Why, when I had my children, Gwendolyn, you have children? Kona's eyes were wide with surprise. The crab smiled. Dear, I had quite a full life in the tropics before I was carried off to be sold in a pet shop. Now, not that I'm complaining, mind you. I am very devoted to our Professor Albert. So there's a picture of them talking. Children, answered Kona. At least 50, answered Gwendolyn. All grown now, and let me tell you my friend giving birth is something private and rather sacred. It was for me as private as prayer. Oh, said Kona with a solemn look on his face. Together the two gazed out the window in silence, at the trees, the stars, the clear moon in the sky. Each was full of thoughts, thoughts about the earth and its heavens, about mothers and their children, about the profound comfort of shelter and the sustenance and the familiarity of home. And both set forth their best and their strongest and their most sustaining thoughts to a little red squirrel who at that moment was happily nursing two baby boys and one baby girl in the good green fragrant fragrance of a pin oak tree. There you can see Stumpy and a little bit of her babies. She had one boy and two boys and one girl. And that's the end of that chapter. Chapter 6 is called Children.